Okay, to make the bechamel sauce, what you're gonna need is the following ingredients. So we have about 90 grams of cheese, we have some flour and milk and butter. So I'm gonna say you usually take equal portions of flour and butter, but I'm, I'm guessing some of you won't have scales at home. So just go ahead and try to use something like you can see here, like 10 gram notes. There's like 10, 20, something like 25 grams of butter, something like this. As long as it's approximate, it will be close. We're gonna put that into the frying pan. Turn our frying pan onto uh, medium to low heat. Once it starts to melt, we'll start adding in our flour. Now, if you're using a non-stick frying pan like this, you're gonna to wanna to use something that's like a heat-proof spatula or something plastic, plastic whisk. If you use metal inside of it, you'll damage your non-stick pan. Or you can go ahead and use like a metal pot um, so that you don't um, ruin the Teflon coating. So for this 25 grams of butter, once it's all melted, I'm gonna add in about two tablespoons of flour like you'll see here in a minute. So bechamel um, requires a roux and a roux is what we're making here. So in your readings, you'll uh, find more and more about what a roux is and how it works. But basically you take butter and flour, a starch, and as um, the starch starts to absorb the fat, it will start to swell up and absorb the liquid which thickens it, okay? So it's like gelatinization. All right, so there all my butter's melted, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in about two tablespoons of flour. And I want to make sure that it all gets coated in the butter before I start adding in any of my milk. Otherwise, that will want to clump up once the cold milk starts going inside of it. So there's different colors of roux that we will learn about. So the first one being the white roux, the next one being the blonde, and the last one being the brown one, okay? So you see here, once it's all incorporated, I'm just going to start taking my milk and start adding my milk in a bit at a time. So, you're gonna see here, you wanna incorporate all of the milk in with it. And it first wants to thicken up like that. As soon as you start to see it thicken up, add a little bit more milk. Keep stirring, constantly whisking or stirring the sauce so that it doesn't clump, become too clumpy, okay? Don't add too much too quickly. Just keep adding it slowly. And what you want to do is just get that starch mixed in with the liquid so that it's going to absorb and thicken everything up. Now you can also, in the beginning, add in fried onions. So um, that's up to you. Uh, I think in the recipe that I gave you, uh, I started with onions or I had right onions in the recipe, but that is completely optional. So you guys can decide if you want to do that or not. So if I was to do that, I would just fry up the onions first before I added the flour in. So you can see how thick it is. So you wouldn't want to put it something like that on your your pasta or your gnocchi. So you need to make it like a cream sauce. So a bechamel is a cream sauce. It's a dairy plus a blonde roux, or I mean a white roux, not blonde. Blonde is for our velouté. So you can see here, it's still very thick. So I'm just gonna keep adding in some milk. And I told you in a recipe for the portion that I'm doing, it would be around 350 ml of milk. So it's about a third or so of a milk jug. But then again, you have to see the right consistency. For this again, I'm gonna season it as I go. I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt in here. So this is a bechamel sauce, and I think it's getting about just the right consistency. 
something that would be nice to coat my gnocchi but not be too thick so when I hold it up here it should run off it shouldn't be clumpy but you want it kind of something like this okay if you do find that you do get a lot of clumps okay inside your sauce you could put it in a blender and blend it up because just some of those starch molecules have not blended in properly and then as a chef it's very important that you taste things as you go so just take a small spoon give it a little taste test I think it tastes good. I think it's a little bit better with onions and definitely needs more salt. Um, you can also put a little bit of pepper if you like. Um, the cheese um, on the recipe is optional. By adding cheese, you actually change the name of the sauce from uh, bechamel to what we call a mornay. And that just means a dairy plus cheese. I'm gonna taste that again. Mm, much better with the salt. Again, you can definitely add those onions in, which I think tastes even nicer. So if I'm gonna add in my cheese, I know it's gonna get a little thicker, so I'm gonna add in a little bit more milk here. Looks like a nice sauce now. I'm happy with that. So I just got a really low heat. Don't forget, don't try to cook too fast, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna make a Mornay. This is completely optional. If you don't have the cheese, you can stop where you were there with the bechamel. Otherwise, go ahead, add in your cheese. It looks like a lot, but it's just grated up. It is a good chunk of cheese, I'm not gonna lie. have it 90 grams of cheese and then you just want to melt the cheese down inside the sauce give it a little taste test again mmm the sauce tastes really nice and there we have it we have a Mornay or before that, a bechamel. So again, a bechamel is a white roux plus any type of dairy, so cream or milk. When we add cheese to it, it changes the name to a Mornay.